All right, we had been talking about uh, a local issue, a purely local issue, dealing with Kapilani Park and the history of Kapilani Park. And it would be interesting to go further into that history. I'm sorry I don't have uh, any materials uh, or any research. And perhaps in the future we can talk a little bit more about Kapilani Park because it raises an interesting uh, historical event where in 1893, I believe it was, uh, the so-called Republic of Hawaii had created this trust and given the park to the, I guess it was a dedicated in perpetuity to the people of Hawaii. The Honolulu uh, City Council did not exist at that time. Prior to the City Council existing, it was, uh, what was it called? The, uh, not the, was it the commissioners uh, of the territory, the city uh, and county of Honolulu, but it was prior to its statehood uh, status. But even that didn't make the change. It was a change from city council, or it became city council, and previous to that, it was a board of, uh, and I forget the term that was used. Okay. And the city and county of Honolulu itself was not incorporated until about 1900 or a little after that. Uh, only recently did it uh, celebrate its 100th anniversary. So in 1893, the city uh, and county of Honolulu was not yet organized. And uh, there's an interesting politics behind that because many people felt that at least uh, that could be the formation of a base for Native Hawaiians while the territorial government taken over by the United States was too much controlled by the United States. So you had a lot of people who were still loyal to Lilio Kalani uh, who found their places in the city and county government, including... Uh, Mayor Joseph Fern, the first mayor of Honolulu and uh, had been mayor for many, many years. And uh, his term was uh, eclipsed, uh, or the length of his term was eclipsed by, I believe it was Frank Fossey, who's, who had been mayor of Honolulu longer than any other mayor. But if you look at the mayorships at, uh, at that earlier time, you will find many of those very loyal to Lilio Kalani who found their political uh, place in the city, including uh, Mayor Johnny Wilson, uh, who was very close to Lilio Kalani. All right, uh, so let's leave that history and uh, uh, bring up uh, other items. I should invite you, if you would like to call and join in our discussion, telephone number here is 524-1080. If you'd like to ask a question or share an opinion, you're welcome to call, and we have our telephone lines open for your telephone calls. Last night I had... Uh, been attracted to a particular discussion and then it led on to uh, some other stuff uh, focusing in on uh, eventually focusing in on some of my activities in the international arena a caller had called and said that uh, he had seen a program with regards to Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, who had been recently uh, released from uh, house imprisonment. She had, uh, previous to that or during that period of time, also won the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, she is a woman of Burma. She is uh, Burmese and uh, had had been an advocate for human rights uh, in Burma. She also ran for political office before her imprisonment and she was uh, elected as a president of Burma. Uh, she was subsequently overthrown. Uh, she was arrested, placed in house arrest, and had been held there for about 15 years or maybe even longer. During the period that I was active uh, within Burma, uh, and that was just a very short period, uh, she had not yet been in prison and she was uh, running for political office at that time. My association was more closely with the uh, 
the ethnic nationalities along the border between Thailand and Burma, also representing some of the other folks uh, along the India and China border. Burma borders uh, these various countries. So you had many uh, indigenous organizations, not, not even organizations, indigenous peoples along these outskirts of uh, the central area of Burma, which is the Rangoon area. And so they uh, did not agree with the Rangoon government, the overthrow uh, of uh, the prior president, even before Aung San Suu Kyi uh, ran for political office. Right after independence, after the British left Burma, uh, I, I don't know to what extent I, I should go back into that history that I did uh, last night. But after the British left, Burma uh, gave Burma its sort of independence. Uh, there was an agreement among the many different people within Burma, including the Burmese, the Karen, the Kachen, the Red Kareni, uh, the Kareni, the Red Karens, and uh, other people who are very distinct. They speak their own language as well as the English language because of the uh, colonization by the British. And uh, they came to an agreement that they would create a federal government within Burma, but also having the right of divorce. So there's some who claim that the right to divorce was always there if the federal uh, agreement was not uh, held to. And uh, after the election of the president of, of Burma, uh, who was, I believe, the father of Aung San Suu Kyi. The military government came in, uh, overthrew the government, killed uh, the father, and uh, basically took, uh, took over governance. Many of the other groups who had joined in that federation immediately split, formed their own armies, to protect them fr themselves from the Burmese army or the Rangoon regime. And this has been going on for the last, what, 50 years. Uh, so that's an earlier history and bringing uh, the case up so that in about 1980, about 1982, 84, 85, up to the 1990s, the United Nations became more active taking a look at indigenous peoples. At that time, they were called indigenous populations. And uh, so my entry into the international arena occurred during this period of time. At the same time, folks from Burma were interested in having their voices heard, especially the Karens uh, and the Kachins. And uh, so as they began becoming more familiar with what was happening at the international arena, they eventually got in touch with me as the political spokesperson for one of the uh, uh, NGOs, this uh, international non-governmental organization. The World Council of Indigenous People was the organization I was associated with and asked if I would assist them in their cause by bringing their voices to uh, the United Nations. So I, to the extent that I could, uh, I spoke on their behalf as well as try to open up avenues so that they could speak themselves to the situation. Part of the problem with their speaking themselves is of course there's retribution by the Burmese government should they be found and oftentimes they could not even exit the country much less get back into the country because the Burmese government would uh, come down on them, would attack their villages, and uh, essentially would try to kill them should they uh, come to the United Nation and speak up. So oftentimes it was my, uh, I was used as a vehicle to speak on behalf of, the, of them because they were not able to come themselves and, and speak. There were a number of times in which they were able to leave the country circulating outside through Thailand and eventually traveling to Geneva, Switzerland. But it was very difficult and there was always concern as they returned back to Burma or their family concerns if they had moved to the United States by that time or to any other country by that time. Uh, so anyway, that was uh, my earlier experience with the situation in Burma.
This was part of the discussion we had uh, last night, and I just wanted to clarify and and uh, sort of, for those of you who have not heard that story, bring that uh, to your attention. Now, that story sort of coincides with another aspect of our discussion last night, and it was with regards to the work, and I believe very good work, that is being done by Leon Seal, who has been uh, more recently involved in the international arena. I left back in about 1992, 1993 was probably about the last time I was there and then more recently in 2000 and uh, was it eight uh, having gone back to see what was happening in the human rights area Leon Siu uh, in about 2000 I believe has been uh, going to the United Nations and advocating for Hawaiian independence or at least Hawaiian self-determination at the United Nations uh, and so I see the work that he is doing and the work that I had been doing as very closely related in that uh, I initiated my movement into the international arena after finding that uh, simply arguing for the case of self-determination within Hawaii was not enough. Uh, Hawaii had made some advancements in terms of indigenous rights, but it was always within the confines of the United States of America. So indigenous rights within the United States is very limited in that uh, you do not step into the area of self-determination in terms of the right to independence, in terms of the right to many other opportunities. It was only to the extent that there was a sort of agreement to or consent by the U.S. government or by the state of Hawaii. And that is not what we are entitled to. We had an independent nation that was taken over and we are entitled to the restoration of the independent nation. We are entitled to all of the rights as any other people. Not simply because we are indigenous to Hawaii, but because this was a nation that was overthrown illegally and we continue to be occupied and now colonized as a result of that occupation, as a result of that overthrow. The story needed to be heard not only within Hawaii, which was a very important forum for the story to be heard, but it needed to be heard among the parties of international relations. And that was in, of course, the primary place, the United Nations, but not only the United Nations. There are many other multinational organizations, uh, and there are many that predate the United Nations that continue to exist and should hear about the uh, events that occurred here in Hawaii. So when I had the opportunity to travel to the United Nations and to speak on behalf of this organization, uh, having been elected uh, as the vice president and then uh, given the responsibility as the political spokesperson for the World Council of Indigenous Peoples, I use this as an opportunity while representing the interests of indigenous peoples in other parts of the world to also tell the specific Hawaii's story of overthrow. Okay. Let me stop at that point and uh, go to our telephones. If you would like to call and share a discussion on this point, you're welcome. We do have two callers right now. And it's uh, very funny, but the calls seem to come in uh, in groups. Let's see. Uh, or oh, let's just go to our telephones. Our telephone number here is 524-1080. Aloha, caller. Welcome to the program. Hey, good morning. Ah, aloha, Kahi. <laughs> Hi, aloha, Palipo. Good to hear you. How are you doing today, brother? Well, fine. I was just trying to follow up on the discussion we had about Leon, about some of my activities at the international arena, and begin to uh, sensitize people of the work that Leon is doing and uh, yeah. some of the assistance that that uh, we all need, and especially him and the sacrifices that he is making. Oh, certainly, yes. Uh, people don't. People don't realize uh, what it takes here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you've you done it a number of years. You know all about it. Well, the sum. Uh, it's a <laughs> yeah. very lonely road when you got to start paying yeah, from your pocket, yeah? Uh, yeah, it can be trying at times. I, I think... Oh, certainly, certainly. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, 
you know, with the cost of everything today, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, my my daughter just going to go to uh, New Mexico, and that's, that runs $1,500 round trip. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. I just it wanted is to. I just wanted to uh, uh, show my appreciation for your program, uh, basically mm. because of the. You know, when you listen to these other guys like Rush Limbaugh and all these other people, yeah, mm-hmm. and they're on the same damn subject all the time. You know, mm-hmm. well, the past uh, <laughs> week and a half has been this Ty or trailer trainer or Martin. And Zimmerman, mm-hmm. the shooting. Yes. Yeah, the killing. Yeah. That's all we talk about, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you come to to uh, uh, to your program, huh? Hawaiian Park Paris, yes? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> go all over. You know, 57 varieties. <laughs> you know what I mean? National, local, international, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny, yeah. you know, it's really, it's really peculiar how. How we such a small little existence in the middle of the Pacific, yeah, mm, mm-hmm. that we have such such a recognized and vital part of what goes mm. on in this world, yeah. Mm, yeah. We no more navy, we no more army, mm, you know, yeah. no more air force, <laughs> yeah. But we suppose we uh, seems to be be the central uh, location of of activity mm. around here. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, with all with all of course uh, the military that's around here, yeah. yeah. But that, that doesn't belong to us, yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right. Yeah. And of course, of lately, uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you, listening audience, of the research by uh, Sister Amelia Gora, mm-hmm. Iolani, yeah, the hawk, okay. yeah. Okay. Yes. Of recent. Of recent. Uh, just yesterday, in fact, yeah, uh, a relationship of how this guy Obama mm-hmm. is really uh, uh, tied in uh, to Hawaii, even though he's not born here, even though he's not born in America. <laughs> what do you mean by that? According to his birth certificate. <laughs> oh, was, hey, what? <laughs> you know... Uh, who, who has three mm. social security numbers at least? Three alias names at least. Mm. Went mm. to three major universities and they don't want to say anything about him. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was president, you president of the United States, I had your, your fraternities and everything would be jumping. Hey, I was Obama's friend or I was Obama's mm. friend. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Nobody say anything. Mm. Was it because he never existed? Oh, he existed on so many aliases, aliases mm-hmm. that they don't know which one he was. But anyway, mm-hmm. the latest one, that his family, his grandmother, the Dunhams, yes. are related to this Booth, B-O-O-T-H, mm-hmm. Joseph Booth, okay, was a missionary family here, who mm-hmm. also was a judge who sat in. One of uh, one of Leo, Leo Kalani's uh, incompetent trials, mm-hmm. and this Dunham is related to them, mm-hmm. and uh, Dunham is related, of course, to Obama. Uh, yes, uh, okay. yeah, that's a grandmother, yo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a grandma. mother's maiden name, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's on the tube right now, basically. Okay. And I just want to give credit to Sister. Uh, for okay. her <laughs> okay. tenacity that she has. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I haven't yeah. seen that, but I'll, I'll take a look at the, yeah. the yeah. website there. Yeah. Okay. And then the recent scoop, brother. Mm-hmm. The recent scoop. Yeah. You first to hear it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> if the people out there yeah. don't have their, their, uh, their uh, ID implant, yeah? Mm. You know the... The national implant, the ID, okay, the R R I D or something. I forgot what the acronym is. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, yeah, you, you know, like you know, the, like the pets have it. That are dogs and a cat. Yeah. But if you, as a human being, don't have it, you're not going to be able to 
get any service under Obamacare. Hmm. Okay. Uh, where where does that come from? That's in the latest uh, on the news print, uh, uh, news within the news uh, website. Uh, and and uh, this is again Amelia Amelia Goras. No, no. This no, is this uh, is to, this is to uh, uh, an article by Betty Fiore okay. of uh, News Within the News uh, uh, site. Yeah. Okay. On it. It stands to reason, yeah. You know, and, and the thing about it, you know, all the people think, well, you know, I'm not a senior citizen, so you know, it doesn't affect me. Hmm. Well, let, let, let let's go and check that out. If you you give me the site, we'll uh, actually take a look and okay, and uh, see I'll get about it. I'll get you the exact. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, right, let, let me go to our next caller. We only have three more minutes before the end of this. Uh, okay, this brother. Again, Thanks for calling. I want to thank you, especially for what you have done for the people of Owe. Mm. Okay, you are people of truth. Yeah. Mahalo, brother. All right. Aloha. 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 And we'll go to our next caller. Aloha caller. Welcome to the program. Oh, good morning, Pocus. Yes, good morning. Let me take a second to try to uh, get back on what I was... <laughs> Were you carried away by <laughs> yeah. the last caller? <laughs> right. Um, it was uh, related to what you were talking about uh, previously about injustices to the the Hawaiian culture. Can you still hear me? Uh, I can hear you. I also hear the feedback. And yes, yes, I turned the radio off, so okay. it's different now. Okay. So, so I'll just go ahead and try to remember what I was going to say. Um, it looks to me as if <clears throat> the um, great part of the American uh, citizenry is being de- has been divided into a big group. Like mm-hmm. there's a lower group that is being treated the same as a uh, conquered land, as a colony, mm-hmm. and that the, our government is extracting uh, resources from its own citizens, mm-hmm. it, rather than in previous wars when when the empires uh, went into other lands and, and got a colony, they extracted the resources from that colony, and that's why they did it. They went to India and got their jewels and Mm -hmm. and built their empires on the riches of their colonies. But our government uh, has gotten nothing from these wars that they're running, and Mm -hmm. they've gotten us poorer, and they're draining how to run their wars from the resources that we are. In other words, Mm -hmm. they're like saprocytes, I think is the word for organisms that eat off their own body. I mean, that's Hmm. a ghastly picture, isn't it? I mean, it was (laughs) ghastly (laughs) enough before, and it's getting ghastlier and ghastlier. (laughs) Anyway, uh, that's that's what I have to say this morning, because it dawned on me when I woke up this morning. (laughs) That's interesting. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> it would be also interesting to see what your dreams are like if you're waking up with that kind of. I don't have any dreams. I don't think I sleep. But that is the truth. <laughs> anyway, good, good to hear you. Okay, story. thanks for calling and uh, call back again. We'll we'll continue with that discussion that you've just raised. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. And uh, if you're new to the program, we this is Hawaiian Potpourri. Uh, we're on radio station KWAI. Kaula nana pua o Hawaii Kupa ama hope o ka aina Iki mai ka elele o ka loko ino Pala pala anu Pane mai Hawaii mo ku o ke awe Ko ku ana honoa o pilani Ka ko o mai kaua i o mano Pa apu me ke o ni o ka kuhi 
Sibila, okay, Kanao. 